Hello friends, welcome to this video lesson. Today we are going to discuss uh, another topic that is family as an agency of education. Before starting our discussion, uh, let me to uh, introduce myself. I Dr. Niradhar De, Associate Professor, School of Education, Indira Gandhi National Open University. Welcome you all to this video lesson. As you know that uh, we are uh, discussing one of uh, the course of your BA general program. This course is from uh, uh, education subject and this is the first semester course. The course code is BESC 131 and course title is education concept nature and perspectives. In this course total 16 modules are there and presently we are in the third module. The title of third module is agencies of education. Uh, in this module, uh, you will find uh, four important lessons. First is family as an agency of education. Today we are going to discuss. And second lesson is school as an agency of education. Third lesson is community and media as agencies of education. Uh, we have clubbed here community with media as agencies of education. And really speaking, both are you know independent agency of education. Community, uh, community as an agency of education and media is also as an agency of education and further state as an agency of education. So friends, uh, this in this module uh, mostly we will discuss about what are the different agencies and what are the different agencies that uh, uh, help the child, help the student, help the learner for getting experiences and uh, getting education. Just like uh, when the child enter in the formal schooling, they get education, they come contact with the teacher, with the peer, with the groups, uh, they involve themselves in school based discussions, curriculum based uh, participation and at the same time they also involve themselves in different types of activities. So here school pledge as an agency for providing education, for providing life experiences to the learners. Accordingly, family is also one of the agency because at the early stage of life starting from infancy till starting the formal education or you can say family is a permanent source of agency of education that we receive many experiences, many knowledge in our family when we come contact with the members of the family. Okay. So that is why family plays an important role for uh, molding the child and at the same time for providing education to the child. Then accordingly community and media also another two agencies when we come contact with the society, with the community, different social group, different community group, we also get educated and we also get many experiences. Accordingly, media is also another agency of education. When we come contact with different media, we get information, we get knowledge and our knowledge horizon, it get uh, widened when we go through different uh, media. Okay. It may be television, it may be radio, it may be print, it may be non-print, it may be electronic media, okay. it may be only on, uh, uh, it may be online sources. Even if it may be magazine, journal and it may be newspaper, we get many information, many knowledge, okay, that information and knowledge may be related to uh, science and technology, may be related to education, may be related to health and may be related to entertainment and other sports, games and sports and other areas also. So that is why uh, media is also one of the uh, agencies of education and further we can say that state is also an agency of education. It also help the individual, help the child for getting education because education is in the concurrent list uh, in our country. So that is why it is the responsibility of the state and it is the responsibility of the country to provide education uh, to the citizens. Okay? So that is why uh, state uh, you know formulate the policies, develop many schemes, many projects and state take the responsibility uh, for providing education uh, to the children, to the citizen. Okay? I can just give the example of RTE Act, Right to Education Act uh, 2009. 
So, accordingly right to education act, it is the responsibility of the state that now education is a fundamental you can say right of uh, the individual of the children that state will provide compulsory elementary education up to the age from 6 to 14 or up to the completion of class 8. So, that is why this module is one of the very important module so far as your course is concerned. So, in this module we will be discussing four different uh, five different agencies of education family, school, community, media and state. Now, let us go forward as today we are going to discuss family as an agency of education. So, let me to focus upon certain learning outcomes and our effort will be to achieve these uh, learning outcomes after going through uh, this video lesson. First of all, you will be able to explain the concept of agencies of education, uh, then you will be able to classify different agencies of education, you will be able to describe the characteristics of family as an agency of education, then you will be able to discuss the role of family as an agency of education for the development and education of the child. I am hopeful that uh, at the end of this video lesson, uh, you will definitely achieve these learning outcomes. Let us go forward. Our uh, discussion uh, will start in understanding the agencies of education. Uh, we can say that during the entire period of life, human beings come in contact with various institu institutions okay, and they acquire educational experiences through these institutions. So, when I am talking about educational institutions, it means it may be a school, it may be a college, may be university, even if the community and society is also an institution, family is also one of the institutions, state is also one of the institution and different stakeholders who contribute for the development of education of the child are also one one institutions. Okay. So, here uh, our focus is that why we have developed such institutions and what is the functions of these institutions for the development of education of the child. And uh, we can say that the agencies of education can be classified into uh, family, school, community, state, media, etc. And these are one one institutions of education. Society has developed a number of specialized institutions to carry out the functions of education. Society has created school and school has a definite uh, role for molding behavior of uh, the uh, students of the learner and for developing the attitude of the learners, a positive outlook of the learners and to bring them to the mainstream of the society. For the among the agencies, some are formal agencies of education where, whereas others are informal agencies of education. In the next slides, we will try to understand that uh, uh, what are the agencies that we call that they are the formal agencies of education and which agencies we call that is they are the informal agencies of education and why they are called as informal agencies of education and why other agencies are called as the formal agencies of education. Let us go forward. Friends, uh, here you see uh, we have classified the agencies of education that is in two categories. First is formal agencies of education and the second is informal agencies of education. Under formal agencies of education, uh, we can say that school, libraries, picture galleries, games, cinema, educational programs on radio and television, etc. You see it may be the example of school, library picture galleries, games, uh, games, cinema, educational programs that comes in TV uh, and radio. This is formal agencies of education because that formally uh, linked with our life, associated with our life for our development, for the development of our education, for the development of uh, uh, modification of our behavior. The another form of education or another agency of education that is informal agencies of education. In informal agencies of education, we can just take the name just like family, community, religion, marketplace, fairs uh, and exhibitions, media, free play, etc. Friends, uh, we have already discussed the formal agencies of education, but here in informal agencies of education, 
uh, you see uh, family as an informal agency of education because when we come contact with uh, with our family we come contact with the senior member of the family our siblings and junior member of the family and mostly we observe what uh, what is going on in the family we observe the culture we observe the custom we observe the family traditions we observe the day to day happening which is going on in the family okay and we learn many things we get information we get knowledge we, and we get uh, many experiences from our own observation from the family and those experiences further we use it in our formal uh, formal education life that means in school life okay and further community when we come contact with our community with our society different social groups we also come to know about uh, the customs the culture and the societal practices how people live how people take decision how things happen uh, things are happening in a group so that's why community is also one of the informal agency of education then religion though religion is a very personal matter still then religion helps us uh, for our spiritual development okay so that's why we also learn many things from our religious practices then marketplace when we visit marketplace we also learn many things we learn many things uh, from different fairs and exhibitions from media free play etc so this is one of the classification that is classification of agencies of education that is formal agency of education and informal agency of education another classification of agencies of education that we can say uh, that is active agency of education and passive agency of education now let us try to understand what are the active agency of education and what are the passive agency of education active agency of education uh, just like uh, school family community religion state social club uh, games entertainment programs etc here you see when we deal such things or when we come contact with such agencies just like when we come contact uh, in school in family when we come contact with the community members or the social members when we practice our own religion when we come contact with the state machineries then different types of when we become a member in a social club and when we uh, engage ourselves in different social activities through that social club and when we engage ourselves in different games and sports then also in different ent entertainment programs so here actively an individual a child actively involved in such agencies so that's why friends it is called as active agencies of education and the other side is the passive agency of education we can say cinema television radio newspaper magazines marketplace etc so these are the passive agencies of education though these are the agencies of education but in our day to day life uh, uh, you know definitely we come contact with such agencies but in comparison to the active agencies of education our engagement in such things in the passive agencies of educations are uh, comparatively less some extent less but definitely we get knowledge and information experiences uh, through television uh, uh, through cinema through radio uh, through newspaper or from different media uh, through magazines and when we visit different places through marketplace and other types of uh, places also now let us try to focus upon uh, family as an agency of education as today's lesson is focused upon family here you see family is an oldest and basic uh, and fundamental unit of human society family nurtures and groom the child family help for the development of the child for the grooming of the child and family also nurture because at the stage of infancy at the stage of early years of life of human child it is the family that they take care it may be parents it may be senior member of the family it may be the siblings they nurture the child they develop the child and they help the child for developing a positive attitude uh, to live in this society okay and they help to transform from animal tendency to human tendency okay 
every individual born with certain animal tendencies and it is the family that it helps the child to practice human tendency to learn human tendency and uh, uh, develop human tendency from the animal tendencies then further child learns uh, uh, in family different types of culture customs values etc uh, here you see we practice values in our family so that's why when the child observe it they also practice different values we practice our culture every family is having their own culture so that's why here the transmission of culture from one generation to other generation it happens in the family okay family observe the things that uh, how the grandparents are doing how the parents are doing and how the siblings are doing then accordingly by observation they learn many things and they practice it in their life then socialization of the child starts with the family it is the family that it so it helps the child for becoming a social being or to uh, uh, for the social development of the child and family plays a very important role in playing uh, foundation of the child's personality in terms of physical emotional social moral and cognitive developments then further uh, to focus upon the characteristics of family as an agency of education uh, we can say that family is universal it is found all over the world friends you can take the example of our society our indian society you can take the example of american society british society and other types of society okay society in any country everywhere you will find that uh, there is the concept concept of family okay they live together they believe uh, in certain things they practice values and knowledge transmits experiences transmit societal practices transmit family culture and practices transmit from one generation to other generation so that's why the concept of family is a type of universal concept then family concept consist of a definite number of persons living together having blood relation or otherwise among themselves you can take the example of in a family mostly in a joint family we live to together grandparents are staying with us our parents are staying with us siblings are also staying with us and together we live together we groom to, together we uh, cooperate so in this way we become socialized and in this way uh, we groom ourselves and uh, further we can say that family is a miniature of the society society is a larger entity you can say and in society family is just a small entity so that's why we can say family is a small form of the society okay family is a miniature of the society because the societal practices group living common living okay that also we practice that also uh, we understand uh, from our family so that's why we can say family is a miniature of the society and we can also say school is also a miniature of the society values of a society are adopted and practiced in the family friends the values that we practice in the society we adopt in the society we learn it from the family okay the senior members of the family our grandparents and our parents they teach us us about the right values okay what values we supposed to practice in our life for the betterment of the human society and the entire civilization you can say further family plays an important role in molding the personality of the child by uh, facilitating his or her all round development family helps the child for their all round all round development further we can say that child develops a sense of responsibility in the family generally adult members of the family have greater responsibility than the children so a sense of responsibility it really starts it really develops from the family every child they develop a type of sense that they have certain responsibility for the family they have certain responsibility for the community and society and in a larger context they have also the responsibility for nation building they have also the responsibility for the development of the country okay it may be at the global level it may be at the national level it may be at the local level they understand their responsibility okay and these responsibilities are groomed 
from the very beginning of the family. And further, we can say family is one of the active agencies of education for inculcating desirable social values among the children for a leading effective social life. Family is the first institution from where the child gets formal recognition to be a member of the society. So family make you to recognize that yes, you are an active member of the society. So that's why family provide you that recognition. And that recognition is very much important for you for living your life, for creating a, uh, a type of uh, individual concept or for grooming yourself in the society. Now let us try to understand that uh, already we have discussed just to uh, recapitulate again that what are the different role of family as an agency of education that work for the development of the child. Just like it educates the child by inculcating positive attitude, developing moral and social values and desirable skills for social interaction. I have already said that positive attitudes are developed in the family, moral values and social values are developed in the family and at the same time by observing the things you can say the young generation or the young mind in the family they also develop many skills many desirable skills for uh, uh, you know living their life that's called as the life skills they they learn it they acquire it and they practice it in the family further it teaches the child about the culture tradition and customs of the society and also teaches him or her fellow feeling love and sense of living together it helps in physical mental and emotional development of the child i was talking earlier that family works for the all round development of the child for the development of the for the physical development of the child for the development of our intellect that is the mental development of the child then the emotional and social development of the child uh, uh, whether the child has received uh, or got the emotional development or not, emotional maturity or not, social development or not, whether he or she is able to understand the societal practices or not and how to behave in a society or not. And at the same time, uh, you know, uh, it is called as your parents or particularly your mother is the first teacher because mother nurtures you and mother teaches you that how to live your life, okay, though it is not formal education. Still then you learn many things from your mother, from your parents and in the further life uh, when you come in the school, the teaching of your mother, uh, the grooming of your mother that help you for uh, preparing yourself a good human being uh, uh, for the society. Further we can say that family facilitates for the socialization of the child, it identifies the interest of the child and accordingly to provide him or her opportunities to develop his or her interest. Every individual in this society are different in terms of their attitude, in terms of their beliefs, in terms of their mental developments are concerned, in terms of their physical development are concerned and in terms of their willpower and interest in aptitude, in intelligence. So that's why you can say that every individual is having uh, same interest, okay, same aptitude. So that's why here family is a place that provides right opportunity to the child as per their need, as per their interest, okay. Further, it not only provides the child basic necessities but also prepares him or her for future living. It is not just the child, at the same time it teaches the child for future living. It makes the child ready for formal schooling also, okay. I have already said that all those experiences that the child get from the school, further these experiences, the link it in the school curriculum, in the school life. So that's why when you will analyze the content of the school, you will find that most of the content are related with our societal practices. Most of the content are related with our family living. So that's why friends, the experiences that you are getting from the family definitely that are helping you for your formal education. Further we can say that family develops among the children a sense of patriotism towards the country, to love the country, to love the nation, to love you can say the society and further in a very large scale 
to love to the entire humanity, to love to the entire universe. It is the family. It is the, you can say, important role of the family that family plays. Then family, they understand their duties and responsibilities to the society. Not only the duties, rather the responsibilities. Not only the right is, rights, rather the duties and the responsibilities. Further, family develops in them respect for human life and dignity, encourage them to preserve, transmit family values and culture. It also uh, provides uh, or it also groom, it also teach the child that how they will preserve at the same time, how they will transmit their culture from one generation to other generation. That is from grandparents to their parents and from parents to their children and further uh, develop in them interest and positive attitude towards people, towards society, towards the entire human society. Now, I have already said that so far as the all-round development of the child is concerned, mostly what family does. The role of family is for bringing physical development among the children, social development among the children, then we can say mental development among the children, then emotional development among the children, then further moral and spiritual development among the children. So that's why the all-round development of personality, it also happens in the family. Further, it also happens in the school, but it starts from the very informal agency of education, that is from the family. Now, uh, let us recapitulate and let us go through certain questions. I am very much hopeful that this video lesson and the content which is given in your self-learning material will help you to help you a lot for answering this question. Just like explain the concept of agencies of education, what to mean by the agencies of education, what is the concept of it, you can able to explain it. And for the classified different agencies of education, we have already discussed that what are the different agencies of education and how we can classify these agencies of education. It may be school, it may be home, it may be media, it may be state, it may be community. How we can classify it so far as active agency of education and passive agencies of education and for the formal agencies of education and informal agency of education. And for the, the another question for your practice that is describe the characteristics of family as an agency of education. So, what are the different characteristics of family that act as an agency of education? And further, another question for your practice that is discuss the role of family as an agency for all-round development of the child. So, here what is the role of the family? What family really does for the overall, for the all-round development of the child? It may be physical development, it may be social development, it may be intellectual development or mental development, it may be development of values, okay. So all such things uh, that you can answer from this video lesson and the part content. In our next uh, session, we will discuss the other agency of education. Thank you.